Well, folks, welcome to one more episode of Extreme Reloading. And we're at the season finale. This season, we've been reloading the 556 or 223 for AR type platforms. Now, that's the AR 15. We've shot the Mini 14, uh, the Ruger's rifle, uh, and the IWI Tavor. All kind of the same class of rifle, not high precision uh, rifles, but kind of a, I guess you'd call it blasting type of uh, rifles. Fun rifles, very ubiquitous rifles that are all over the place and a lot of guys have these things and want to reload for them. Now let's just do a quick season recap. Starting with the brass. You know we did a lot of testing of brass and I used a lot of the same techniques that I've used in the past to craft real high precision rifle uh, ammunition for uh, single shot like the uh, 243 in the Ruger number no. one, like my 220 Swift in Ruger number no. one, like the 308 Winchester in my Ruger precision rifle. All those techniques of finely crafting the brass didn't really pay dividends. Why? Because we're in a different class of rifle. But the take home point on brass is that we did see an advantage of simply sorting our brass by head stamp. Remember, Lake City here, Norma USA here, Federal, whatever it is. That simple step did pay dividends and I recommend that you do that in your reloading as well. Next up, let's talk about primers. We did a primer palooza, testing a number of different primers in our reloads. And you know what turned out best? Federal AR match primers. I think that these primers are actually set to work with about that powder charge, you know, 20, 25 grains of powder in a 223 type of case, and they really outperformed everything else that we tested. And they were very consistent as we started using those things later on. We're usually getting about 15 feet per second, sometimes low 20s, but we can count on in the mid teens feet per second, standard deviation of all those muzzle velocities over about a 10 shot uh, group. The powder that we've been using has really uh, been a good powder for me in lots of different uh, instances and this is Varget. I used 24.3 grains of powder uh, behind a 69 grain bullet and 25.3 grains of powder behind my 40 grain bullets. Speaking of bullets, 69 grain bullets really got a major advantage as long as the twist rate of your rifle can stabilize those bullets. And you know, I don't know of any AR type of rifle built out there that can't stabilize a 69 grain bullet. We get much heavier than that, 77, 80 grain bullets, then we got to really watch that uh, twist rate. And by the way, sometimes a bullet is supposed to stabilize uh, in the twist rate of your rifle, but if you're right on the cusp of that, you really got to test that because your rifle really may not stabilize that bullet. I've seen that quite a bit. Now, back to the bullet itself. The winner for me was the Barnes 69 grain match burner. You know, I choose that over the 40 grain Barnes Varminator simply because of the ballistics, the exterior ballistics. That load will allow me to shoot quite a bit further uh, and not experience that tremendous drop that we're seeing with the 40 grain bullet. Even though that 40 grain bullet really, really shot a nice group. If all your stuff is within 100 yards, if that's where you do your shooting, then definitely go with the Barnes Varminator in 40 grain. Excellent choice, I guess, either way. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about in our recap is to think about the cost of reloading. For a lot of guys, for a lot of folks, that's the reason you got into reloading in the first place. Ammunition became expensive and this was a hobby that could pay you some literal dividends in reducing the cost of, the, of your recreation. So 5.56 five, or 223 brass, I don't even include that in the cost of reloading. The stuff is all over the place. You know, if I buy a box of a thousand or a case of a thousand rounds of of uh, Federal American Eagle or Independence or Lake City Brass, I'm going to shoot that stuff just for the fun of it and I'm going to pick up brass and when I'm out there picking up this brass, I'm probably going to see some more brass out at the range that someone else didn't pick up. 
So it's really easy to get a good stash of brass for your reloading in the 5.56. And this is one of those calibers that you don't really need to buy um, fresh brass for it. So brass I'm chalking up as free. Now let's go to the primers. Federal AR match primers actually weren't terribly expensive. Let's say they're about $4 with tax for a box of or a little container of 100 um, primers. That makes each round four cents, only four cents invested in your primers. Varget powder, about $30 a pound. You're going to throw 24.3 grains of it, or at least that's what I'm doing. And that cost me a dime, a dime per round. The most expensive part of this load is the bullet itself. The Barnes um, match burners cost me less than a quarter a piece, 22 cents a piece. And if you're lucky and you find these bullets on sale, uh, then that drives the cost down even more. Now a full box of 20 rounds of this ammo is going to cost you $7.25. $7.25. Now here you have the cost of kind of your typical blasting ammo, the same American Eagle, Independence, that sort of stuff. Pretty much that same cost. But yet we're up there matched up and beating stuff like Hornady Match that we shot in our last episode, that 73 grain ELD bullet. Well, these Barnes Match Burners beat it in accuracy and did toe to toe on the consistency of our muzzle velocities as chronographed. But the huge difference here, and I'm not knocking that Hornady ammo, that's probably the best stuff you're going to get off the factory shelf. It's really good stuff. But it's $21 or $22 a box. So in effect, I can load three boxes of my premium ammo for one box of the Hornady factory ammo. Now if you're interested in all those calculations and making the calculations easy for you, uh, I use a little Excel spreadsheet with some functions built into it and I'll post a link to our Dropbox where you can download that same Excel spreadsheet yourself, play around with it, find out how much your loads are costing you. Well that wraps up this season of Extreme Reloading. I hope you enjoyed all of our episodes and thanks for watching.